What's going on, everybody? It is April 18th, Wednesday slate, and we've only got seven games to talk about. We're actually going to be able to fly through this, so anyone that thinks that we go too long, you're in luck today. We don't have as much to talk about. Um, my, my partner in crime here is very happy after an excellent uh, Pat Corbin start. So, uh, Jake, how are you feeling about yesterday? Yesterday was good. Uh, if you, yeah. So the the three pitchers I was really high on were Kluber, um, even though we didn't know he was in Puerto Rico at the time, and then uh, <laughs> Corbin and Cahill too. So it was it was a really good slate. If you had, especially Corbin and Cahill, they combined for like seventy five on DraftKings, and then you didn't really need too much out of the bats, and so my lineup was fine even with just one home run. Um, yeah, hope hope you guys. Played some Trevor Cahill, especially that was that was a fun play. So, Hope he didn't have too much Otani. <laughs> yeah, he left after a couple innings. Yeah, uh, blister, I guess. But it yeah, wasn't those, going well either. No, it wasn't going well, and that might have been why. Um, so, just something to keep an eye on with him. Like we've seen guys struggle with these blisters, and like it sounds like oh whatever, it's just a blister. But you see some of these the pictures of these things when these guys are throwing ninety five miles an hour. And like that's a lot of friction on your hands, and they get pretty nasty. So, um, if he's going to be prone to blisters, that's at least something you have to keep an eye on for him leaving for early starts. I had one once actually while pitching um, on the tip of my middle finger. It, it hurt so bad, and it finally just sort of popped while I was pitching, and it was, that was the last batter that I faced. <laughs> I couldn't stay out there. Yeah, it was awful. It was really yeah. gross too. Yeah, it's just... I can like, picture it clear as day. It's so weird. And this was like 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's not anybody being soft if you're trying to pitch with blisters. No, nah, it's like having a hole pitcher. in your hand. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enough, yeah. About the, the, enough about gross blisters on uh, hands. <laughs> yeah. What a so way we're... to start off the video. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just talking main slate, yeah. uh, just to remind you guys... Uh, yeah. So seven games on both sites. Yeah, the uh, the early stuff was different on both slates. There's some weather issues uh, for the early games, so it was easier to just talk about the the same consistent seven games. So let's dive in. Osmo, Osmo will have rankings for the early. Is that is that right? You know, um, almost positive that he will. If he doesn't, uh, Osmo DFS on Twitter. You should yell at him. <laughs> There we go. I'll pass the buck. I can't help that one. Yeah. Uh, first game up, Mets and Nats. Uh, Mets, 4.1 run implied total. Nats, 3.9. It's a 51% chance to win for the Mets. Here we go again. Steven Matz going for the Mets. Tanner Roark going for Washington. Um, I like Matz a bit here, uh, particularly on DK, where it's not as clean of a spot for finding a second pitcher so i'd be okay with mats i don't really have much interest in uh roark you yeah, no roark for me just too many lefties the the thing with him is he's got huge true splits uh so very good against righties pretty bad against lefties and then um so you want to target lefty bats against him in general um mats he, he's a guy for me that's been really really lucky like he, he's striking out righties at a near 30 percent clip so far this season um but he doesn't have a swinging strike rate over 10 in any of his three games his whiffs per swing are bottom third in the mlb for starters that have thrown 100 pitches so i'm not buying it um i'm not buying his strikeout rate right now and i mean you're not going to buy a lot of guys strikeout rates that are around 30 for either side um so there are a lot of righties here that can give him trouble. Yeah, it's a then, little scary. Yeah, and then Bryce Harper is the the one lefty you get, so that's not like you're getting any any break there. No. Um, and Matts is a guy that I don't like to play the guys that are really bad at holding on runners, and Matts is one of the worst. Even though he is a lefty, I'm assuming he's just very very long to the plate. I think we've we've talked about that before, but yeah. Um, so I like. 
I actually like a Nats stack. So I'm on the opposite side of you. Like Trey Turner at the top, we know what he can do when he gets on base. And then Rendon, Zimmerman, Kendrick all have power. Michael Taylor has power, and he's 2,900. I like that a lot. And then, of course, you can throw in Bryce if you can afford him. Yeah, I'm perfectly cool with a Nats stat. Um, I just like Matt sort of for his price. There's not a ton below him from a price perspective on DK that like stands out for me. Um, so I think that he's just sort of like a functional play there. Nothing like, I mean, there's really, to me, only one good play on DK, so it makes it tricky. Um, I, Fandle's a little bit easier. Like, I wouldn't touch Matt's on Fandle because the line is too close and it's righty Nats bats. Like, that's not a direction I want to go, so... Mm-hmm. Matt's would only be in play for me as my second DK pitcher, if at all. Uh, yeah. I'm with you on uh, Nats, Stack, Trey Turner, uh, Rendon, Zimmerman. Uh, that all looks great. Obviously, Harper is fine to come along for the ride in any stack, whether it's lefty-lefty or not. Um, I like Taylor's price on DK. Uh, I think that he would be you know, more than okay as part of a stack, but... Zimmerman for me, at least on FanDuel, twenty five hundred. He's the guy that I'm looking at more than anything in this game. I yeah, I love them all, and I, I love their prices too. Yeah, on, on DraftKings, very very affordable. You can play like Bryce Harper's. He's not going to be like two percent owned or anything, but he, he's fifty two hundred. It's lefty lefty. If you're stacking, you're assuming you're going to see a righty at some point. I just to remind you, at least that's how my thought process is. So I have no problem putting in an elite hitter even if it isn't a lefty-lefty matchup, and he yeah. could still hit Mats too. It's not like Mats is Kershaw or one no, of these no. crazy good lefties where you're really worried about him for three at-bats. So I think they can knock out Mats pretty early, and I really, really love the top six for the Nationals. I'm with you. I don't love uh, Howie Kendrick's price on FanDuel, but that's sort of besides the point. I can get to a, an easy four-person Nats stack and include who, really whoever I want in that top six. Um, mm-hmm. Not loving the Mets all that much, which is kind of surprising to me considering they have the you know slight lead in uh, implied total. Uh, Asdrubal Cabrera still looks pretty good on DK, but that price is starting to climb. He's not as good of a play on FanDuel in my opinion. I don't really see the Mets as a, a particularly viable FanDuel stack. Yeah, uh, I... I have some interest in the Mets, but like I, I cannot get myself to play Adrian Gonzalez despite the the barrel numbers and stuff. Um, I'm just not there yet at, at first base with him for 3,500. Yeah. It is a good price, and then you've got uh, Conforto for 4,700, Cabrera for 3,800. He's him and Jed Lowry just never never get priced up. They're never going to reach 4K apparently. Um, <laughs> And they're both just crushing the ball. So I like Cabrera in the two spot and then Jay Bruce in the four spot. I don't really like Cespedes that much in this matchup. But if you're stacking one, two, four, I get that it's hard to leave off Cespedes. But again, you're using up all your outfield spots on DraftKings there. Yeah, it's, I don't, I just, I don't know. Something about the Mets pricing is weird to me outside of Cabrera. It's just not. I don't. I don't expect them to pop up all that much. There are quite a few stacks in the later games that are going to be really appealing. Yeah, I and I always love late bats for whatever reason. I I guess I'm just on a lot of the the West Coast teams. Yeah. So, um, I do really prefer the the Nats bats here, but I think that um, the guys in the top four, specifically the lefties for the Mets make a lot of sense here as well and it, it's pretty good hitting weather too 55 degrees a little bit of wind blowing out nothing huge though okay yeah i don't really i don't know this it feels like the first couple games that we always talk about there's very little to really say like, yeah yeah grab the nats bats that one's pretty easy yep we'll head to the twins and indians which is not being played in minnesota um something that uh, we were not talking about yesterday. <laughs> 3.7 run implied total for the Twins, four runs for the Indians. It's a 54% chance to win uh, for the Indians. Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Carlos Carrasco uh, going for Cleveland. Um, I like Carrasco here on FanDuel. Uh, I'm hoping that line stretches slightly. 
Um, but I think Carrasco grades out a little bit better than Berrios. Berrios is a complete no play for me on FanDuel. On DK, I probably still prefer Carrasco <laughs> over Berrios. Yeah, I can't really argue against them. Like these are two pitchers that I I really like in general, and I like playing them both. The the thing with Berrios right now is this is a really tough matchup for him. The the whiff per swing, the swinging strike rate is not where I'd like it to be for the guy that's having these kind of results. Like didn't he just throw a, a complete game shutout against the White Sox in his last start? There was actually dirty so far. Yeah. Twenty He's innings pitch, ten and a half Ks per nine and a half walk per nine. Yeah. And I'm not saying that whiffs and swinging strike rate are the end all be all. Like there are guys that just are naturally gonna have lower um whisper swing and, and swinging strike rate because they throw a lot of first pitch strikes and whatever. But um, like Barrios, I think he pitches pretty well here. Like I don't want to target Indians bats. Maybe uh, Jose Ramirez is just a guy that's a really good hitter and can hit for power and he's got a bunch of speed. But outside of that, I don't really like bats um, for the Indians. And then Carrasco is a guy for me where he's a guy that can get pretty wild like, he's got nasty, nasty stuff. Both these guys do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I don't know, he, he can get wild at times. So, I don't I don't really want to target against him either because I'd want lefties. And I don't really want to play Joe Maurer or Eddie Rosario on this slate. But I could at least make a case for some Twins lefties here. Yeah, Maurer and, <clears throat> excuse me. Maurer and Rosario both have kind of okay prices on DK, actually. Uh, there's just not a ton to go with them, and that's sort of the problem. Uh, I don't mind the Indians' bats all that much. Uh, I'd be cool going Lindor, Kipnis, uh, Jose Ramirez, and then finding a fourth on FanDuel. Whether that's whether I you know I stick with the one through four and go Brantley, or drop down for something cheaper and grab like Yonder Alonso. Um, it's a direction I would entertain a little bit. I don't love the implied total of four. Um, you know that's still pretty low, so it's not somebody I love like overwhelmingly, but I think the top three have some nice pricing right now. Yeah, and that's... I always like getting guys at like if I can stack up a second baseman, a third baseman, and a shortstop, I'm always really happy to get that sort of chunk of a stack because then you could really prioritize first base and outfield somewhere else where it's loaded. Uh, so that's sort of just a little bit of my interest in the Indians. Yeah, that Nothing that crazy. makes sense. Um, yeah, I I guess I do like all these guys a little bit individually. The top four for the Indians. Um, I just don't really like the idea of stacking against Jose Barrios. Barrios, I'm with you um, there. Like I I do. There are a lot of guys that I'm willing to stack against tonight, and I don't think Barrios is one of them. Yeah, so. it, it's it, they aren't my first stack, that's for sure. Okay. Um, just be well, they, you know that implied total is really what's bringing me down quite a bit. Um, yeah. But there, I'll definitely have a little bit of them, particularly as like the second part. So my non four person stack. So to grab a, a a group of three, I think that Lindor, Kipnis, and Ramirez are going to show up a lot for me. Okay. Yeah, that that's fair. Um, and again, you play you play more lineups than me, so. I'm trying to narrow down the, the very, very best plays, and you're getting exposure to a, a lot more stacks. So I, I definitely get it. Yeah, you you guys don't realize how how much of a a clean perspective you're getting here. One guy playing 150 lines on FanDuel, the other guy playing one lineup on DK. You get you're getting everything. We're we're covering it all. Yeah, we're like the perfect we're the perfect combo. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um. Yeah, Twins bats, I'm good outside of, like I said, Maurer and Rosario look to have some decent pricing on uh, on DK. I don't have any real interest in any of them on FanDuel. I don't, I don't think they're priced very well. Logan Morrison, I guess, but it's still not even something I'm interested in. And Maurer, like, I'm, like, almost interested in playing him this season. He's, he's just a good hitter. No one ever plays him, and he's always cheap, even against righties. So, like, there will be times where I like Maurer, but this is not not the time. I love Maurer. I'm going to be sad when he's gone. He's got he a 531 a, on base percentage this year. He gets a really, really bad rap here in 
Minnesota because people expect him to like hit like 40 home runs a year after he signed that big contract, but he's never really been that guy. And he's actually just been a pretty good hitter his entire career, and people don't give him credit for that. That's kind of great. Like, I have no perspective of uh, the Minnesota sports scene. I would ex- I would have assumed that he was, like, a legend. No, like, he was when he was younger. Sure. Was, oh, yeah. Know. I mean, if people didn't like him from 2005 to 2010, like, those people are just idiots. Yeah, and then once you get the big contract, everyone's ex- expecting all of a sudden you become this amazing player, this all-time great, like... I mean, he's a legendary twin. Yeah. Um, and, like, you know, ignoring any, like, personal perspectives to it. Like, he's just, I mean, he's been, he's been there forever. He, and he's just been 2004. really good. Yeah. I, was, I just graduated high school. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been awesome. I've always loved him. Go Joe Maurer. I'm not going to yeah. play you tonight, though, buddy. Sorry, you look like garbage. <laughs> uh, Braves and Phillies. Didn't go well yesterday. Uh, Braves, 4.3 run implied total. Phillies, 4.2. It's a 51% chance to win for the Braves. Brandon McCarthy on the hill for Atlanta. Vince Velasquez going for Philly. Um, I I have no interest whatsoever in Brandon McCarthy. And I think Vince Velasquez looks pretty nice as like a second pitcher option on DK. Um, Yeah, Velasquez is tough for me. He's a very volatile pitcher. Yeah. Um, and I like. Don't get me wrong. I like. I like playing volatile pitchers because I'm playing pretty much all GPP. So he's a guy that makes me nervous when he gets hit. He gets hit really hard, and he does struggle against lefties. And the Braves have a lot of them. Just despite what you think of the Braves, I know they're your team. <laughs> um, despite what the public thinks of them, they they've got some good hitters in the top five of this lineup. Um. So I don't think I'm going to go to Velasquez. Okay. And this run total does make me a little bit nervous. I think there's a guy near Velasquez's price that I am tentatively on um, that we'll get to later. But the the SB2 spot is really, really tough for me tonight. So, like, I I get it with Velasquez. I would probably – if I were on DK, I would probably have – we're going to get to most of this, but I would have a boatload of Robbie Ray – and like a revolving door of Mats, Velasquez, Skaggs, uh, Roark, I guess, just because they all sort of grade out the same. I mean, Velasquez and Skaggs have the exact same projection for me right now. 16.76. Like, it's not even, it's the two decimal points. So it's hard for me to care too much about either one of them, but I have a feeling you're going to be talking about Skaggs in like 20 minutes, so. Yeah, I think I just think he's okay. Like I think he could get me fifteen. Sure. And I would be thrilled with fifteen out of my SP two tonight. Well, I've got him for sixteen point seven six. So you're gonna be real happy if he hits that number. I'd love that. I would take I would take like twelve, like guaranteed twelve, and just forget about SP two tonight. There you go. Uh, bats in this game are weird. I, I'm cool with having some Phillies. I don't love the prices of Herrera or Hoskins, but, you know, Hoskins pretty much prices are relevant at this point. The dude just rakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't love any of the Braves pricing on FanDuel outside of Freeman, which is really weird. I, I don't normally get guys that are expensive to be the lone value spot in a lineup. That's usually, like, the place where it falls behind. But here... Freeman's got the best price out of anybody on the Braves, in my opinion, on FanDuel. I think the Braves look like a better stack on DK. Uh, yeah. yeah, because of the, the prices with NCRT and Marquecas and Preston Tucker, even all around 3K. Yeah. And then Albies, 4,400. Freeman, 5,100. But you can you can get by the $5,100 price with Freeman with one or two more lines of bats. Yeah. Albies is $100 more expensive on FanDuel, so he's really hard to get to. Wow. Um, and Marcakis is $200 more expensive on FanDuel. So the pricing for the Braves is kind of weird right now. I much prefer them on, on DK. I, I can't imagine having any real exposure to them on FanDuel, which is a shame because they've got a decent run total, and I would have liked to just cheer for them doubly tonight. But instead, I'll probably have more Phillies than, than Braves, if I had to guess. Who do you like on the Phillies? I'm just... 
I mean, uh, Hernandez, I like more than you like daily. That's yeah, just sort of our thought processes here. Um, but Carlos Santana, thirty five hundred. Um, I just love that price. Brandon McCarthy is exceptionally hittable, so I trust the guy with the three seventy on base and the four seventy slugging projected to like just be able to put the bat on the ball. Yeah, I I love um, Santana and Nick Williams are the two guys I really really want to target, and Nick Williams might be a guy that could make. SP2 a little bit easier if I try to pay up for two starting pitchers somehow. Uh, 2,900 on DraftKings. He just got big power, and I'm home run hunting with him. And he's a guy that has got big home run potential, especially against a guy like McCarthy who just cannot miss any bats. Yeah, the combination of McCarthy and the implied total. Normally, Nick Williams doesn't really grade out well for me, but on FanDuel, 2,300. He actually looks pretty good today. Um, he would probably be, I don't know, my third favorite Philly to grab, um, you know, if we're taking price into account. So something like Hernandez, Santana, Williams, and then, I don't know, one of Herrera or Hoskins would be yeah. more than okay with me on FanDuel. And yeah. then I would cheer against it. <laughs> so I, I'd rank them um, Santana, Williams, Hoskins would be like the, the three guys and then Herrera Hernandez after that. Yeah. Santana, the clear one for me. Yeah, me too. Okay. And then like we said, for the Braves, uh, it's, it's Freeman far and away. Yes. Um, just a dramatically better play than anybody else in the Braves lineup. Yeah. Um, I like Albies too. I, I just like playing him in general at second base. He's been raking this year. Yeah. He's, he's really, really good. And um, but it's, it's just hard for me with the price on DraftKings when um, Esdrubal Cabrera is $600 cheaper and there are some other second basemen that I like. Yeah. I wish I could like the Braves a little bit more today. I just hope they good. win. It's good hitting weather. 77 degrees. It looks like wind blowing across the field, maybe a little bit out. If I get in the car right now, I'm going to be there in six hours. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't. I can't drive six hours anymore. I'd fall asleep halfway there. You just can't do that to go to a Braves game. It's got to be something entertaining. Yeah, I need something better than just Braves Phillies on a Wednesday. Although if I were <laughs> gonna go, I would want to go see them play the Phillies because I've seen them play the Phillies. God, I can't even count the amount of times. Just from lived like an hour from Philadelphia, so anytime I needed to see the Braves, I was seeing them in Philly. There we go. Yeah, it was good back in the day because the Braves were good. By the time yeah. I got to college, it wasn't the same sort of scenario. Uh, Diamondbacks and Giants. This one's going to be one that I talk about a lot. Uh, D-backs, 4.5 run implied total. Giants, 3.8. It's a 58% chance to win for the Diamondbacks. Uh, Robbie Ray on the hill for Arizona. Chris Stratton going for the Giants. Robbie Ray, uh, far and away my favorite pitcher of the slate. Either site, I would just want a ton of him. And uh, the Diamondbacks on my first run of my data for FanDuel were the primary stack for me. So I'm all Arizona tonight. I I can't disagree. Like if I was going to be on Corbin last night, lefty, uh, good strikeout stuff. Ray has even better strikeout stuff. Maybe not right now because Corbin's just been insane. But Ray has about as high as about as high of an upside as pretty much any pitcher on most slates. If you just give him a neutral matchup, this is a better than neutral matchup, I think. Um, I read off the fancy Giants numbers yesterday about their them being undisciplined, and that was just the point. They're, they're undisciplined. Yeah. Um, and Corbin exposed them again. Um, so if Ray's on, like he, he's going to strike out 10 in six innings or seven innings like he doesn't need to even go that deep to pay off at this price yeah, so I, I love him yeah he's just it seems like a, a misprice like he's a thousand too cheap on DraftKings, and he's got about as good of a chance as a win as anyone on the slate as well so on FanDuel, just a really really awesome play there too yeah i couldn't imagine spending 300 more dollars than getting barrios <laughs> yeah what i don't I don't get the pricing sometimes. I don't know. Is, is, like, do you think this is a trap? Do you think he's going to be super, super chalk? 
Um, it won't. Yes, in a way. Uh, luckily, Garrett Cole is there in a good matchup to like sort of offset that. Yeah. Um, because Cole's going to be, you know, Cole's my second favorite pitcher of the day, uh, and he'll have a ton of ownership just because it's a. All of the signs also point to Cole being in a good spot. It just so happens that Ray is really good and has a discounted price. Um, yeah, it does feel a little trappy, but yeah. I, I don't, I can't, I can't care about that. Or other, otherwise, I'm just going to be sitting here thinking, why didn't I start Robbie Ray when he went eight strong and had 14 Ks? <laughs> Something stupid like that. Like I could actually see um, that happening though. Like yeah. he, he's just got so much upside when he's on. And we just saw the Giants get shut out by Corbin, a lefty. One hit. Um, yeah, one hit. Like, and it was a squib. He should have had a no hitter, probably. But like, it Man, was if like. If you would have had a no hitter, that. this would have been a really interesting video this morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, Evan Longoria was a late scratch yesterday. So if he's not in the lineup again, that's a even a little bit of a boost to Ray. Just a righty with power that doesn't strike out against lefties being out of the lineup. Yeah, I don't have him in right now. Yeah. So, that, all signs point to Ray tonight. He's my top pitcher. Um, in terms of value, um, or in terms of point per dollar, I should say, not not value. He's not a, a value pitcher, but right. um, I'd maybe put Garrett Cole ahead of him in raw points, but point per dollar, I think it's Ray, and it's not all that close. Um, completely, completely agree. Uh, now, the Diamondbacks' bats, uh, they're just... They popped up like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. It might as well have been the whole team when I looked at it. Uh, my projections love Kettle Marte. And at 2,500 for a second baseman in a game where they have the highest implied run total, like that's where I'm trying to get my second baseman from. Um, I'm paying next to nothing in a game that's supposed to have a bunch of runs, or at least the most projected runs. Uh, so I don't mind having him in scenarios like that. Obviously, Goldschmidt is just a monster hitter. Uh, AJ Pollock looks good. So right there, I'm at two, three, four, second baseman, catcher, first baseman, slash person on FanDuel, uh, an outfielder. And then I can go to, like, Descalso, or I haven't even mentioned David Peralta. He hits leadoff. That's perfect. Uh, I, any, like, any direction is fine. Alex Avila is an exceptional catcher play on DK. It's just, it all looks great. I, I love the Diamondbacks tonight. They are going to be the key to whether or not I make money for sure. Yeah, you said you said it all. Um, I'll just talk about Stratton a little bit and why why we want to stack against him. So forty two point six percent hard contact, three point six three walks per nine, uh, sixteen point seven percent K rate this season, but has survived. It's a small sample, but this guy hasn't missed bats when he's been in, in the MLB and is a two thirteen BABIP on the year so that might explain a little bit of how he's survived when you're giving up that much hard contact you're going to get blown up um i don't care yeah, if you're a ground ball pitcher is very yeah. low yeah um I, I mean so the the bats here it's, it's an awful spot for stratton i think um he's just not going to miss a lot of these bats peralta Marte, uh goldschmidt and pollock two of my favorite plays of the night even though they're they're righty righty my boy Daniel Descalso again is twenty five hundred dual position eligibility on DraftKings minimum then, salary on Fanduel. Yeah, so I like that a ton if you're paying up for a pitcher. Um, Alex Avila for twenty eight hundred, I love that, especially against a guy who's got a very low strikeout rate against lefties. Um, I don't know. There's just, I think they're going to be one of the more owned stacks of the night, but I put them up there with the Nationals and uh, the Dodgers and the Astros, so I like them all. Yeah, they make everything work for me. Um, I can have them with Robbie Ray. I can have them with Garrett Cole. Like, uh, it all works. They're not expensive at all. I'll see. I, I would expect to see a lot of them with Cole, and then sort of the most expensive bats I can find elsewhere, and I'll be. Good to go. Yeah. I don't normally like cheering for the Diamondbacks. They're just not like a team that I've ever been interested in. But I'm going to be their biggest fan tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for Giants bats, like if you were trying to do, uh, you know, a contrarian play to fade Robbie Ray, uh, 
I don't know, McCutcheon maybe on DK. I, I don't know. Uh, probably yeah. nothing. <laughs> uh, McC- McCutcheon would be the guy for me too. Yeah. If you want to leverage bat. Posey, I guess. Yeah. Just guys that, that don't strike out well, that have a little bit of power. Those are the guys you want to target against Ray because he, he can get hit really hard. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to have Joe panic. I can tell you that. No. No. No Joe panic. Cue the cue the two home run Joe panic game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Giants, uh, that's uh, you're getting too, too cute if you want a bunch of Giants tonight. Mm-hmm. I uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody on the D-backs, but I think we're good. Angels and Red Sox. Um, 4.4 run implied total for the Angels. 3.9 for the Red Sox. 56% chance to win for the Angels. Tyler Skaggs um, on the hill for the Angels. Rick Porcello going for Boston. Um, I'm relatively indifferent on both of these guys on FanDuel. I think Skaggs would be the guy that I would end up having if I were dropping down that far in salary. Um, and then I think Skaggs looks like a perfectly accept- acceptable uh, second pitcher option on DK. Yeah, this is this is the guy that I'm looking at, at least for my SP2. He I like him a bit in general. It's a nice price on DraftKings. A really tough matchup. Um like it's tough for me because I either have to go all in or not like 0%. So I'd want to get some exposure to him if I had multiple lineups, but he's at least interesting at this price. He's got a 26.7% with per swing rate, which is in the upper third in the MLB um, over 11% swing strike rate. And all three of his starts walks are concerning hard contacts concerning, but I think you might be able to get away with them here in a, big ballpark at least so it's not like a a rousing endorsement of tyler (laughs) skaggs it's just a a price and slate thing and i'd like to pay up for some bats if i can okay do you know the red sox record right now like have they lost even like they're 14 and two yeah they just angels are 13 and four (laughs) i didn't know the red sox were 14 and two yeah I mean, I knew they were playing really, really, really well. Fourteen and two is a torrid start, and it's kind of yeah, crazy to think that, like, I don't know, they're like sizable underdogs tonight that's with a three point nine run implied total. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of it's wild to me to think about. Um, yeah, it's like my boy Skaggs, <laughs> Vegas, with all the respect for Tyler Skaggs. I might play Skaggs because his. Projected FIP on Steamer is 420. That's about it for me. <laughs> that's my that's my analysis. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, like Skaggs is fine. I just I like Robbie Ray and Garrett Cole so much that I think they're going to end up having like 90 percent of my pitching ownership. So I'll have some sort of little sprinkle of mm-hmm. Vince Velasquez and Skaggs. Like all these guys are going to show up in like one or two lines for me. But I like those other okay. two so much that like it just doesn't come into play on Fanduel. I would definitely be looking at Skaggs as a as an SP2 on DK. Now, bats in this game, I honestly hate all of it. <laughs> it I thought I was going to like an Angel yeah. stack, but I don't. Um, it's just yeah. it's just a full column of red in FanDuel except for I, Trout. I, I like the Angel stack actually. Okay. Uh, it, talk to me about Por- it. <laughs> Porcello, like I I'm just kind of sick of this guy, but he he's been good at um, limiting soft or hard contact, but I don't really believe in the strikeouts we're seeing. He faced 24 Yankees batters in his last start and gave up one hard hit ball, which is pretty crazy. So, uh, like, I don't think he's some some gas can, but he is 126 out of 140 starting pitchers when I checked last night in whiffs per swing. Ooh. And I think people are going to talk themselves into Porcello here, or maybe maybe some people will. He'll become like a trendy. Uh, contrarian GPP SP2 because of this price. Um, I don't know, but I like I like Trout. I like um, Justin Upton, and then Luis Valbuena at thirty three hundred is a guy that I'll probably play. I always look to play him against a righty, and he's thirty three hundred dual position eligibility, and he just lets me do a lot on DK. So 
I do like Valbuena quite a bit and some of these angels. Yeah, I'm I'm just shocked at how not good the Angels bats are grading out on FanDuel. It's I'm gonna be like I guess I have it up. I can look at it right now. I assume they're barely in here. Who's the? I mean, Trout might show up in a solo spot, but first, yeah, I, Trout is in three percent of the first hundred and fifty lines that I built, and that's the highest Angel to show up. <laughs> I just, I guess it's just a price thing, um, because when I first looked at it, I was like, okay, you know, Angels will be a relatively decent stack for me. They're not going to show up, and I, I don't even think that I can force it in any way. Yeah, they're, I don't know, I don't think they're like the top stack of the night, but I, Porcello's not a guy I'm afraid to really stack against, despite what he's done so far this year. The, the weird thing is, neither am I. Like, if I were building solo, li- like, if I were building a lineup by hand. I would probably be looking at the Angels as part of a stack. So it's just kind of crazy to me. I'm, I'm all crossed up on them. I can't get like the vibe of it all. This is one of those, another one of those situations where I think I talked about it yesterday. I can't remember if that was the live show or this show, where uh, it's so far off and not showing up. Like I'm really anxious to see what our rankings end up being to see if I'm just incredibly wrong. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see the, the crunch. Like, I don't expect to see any Angels bats or Red Sox bats in anything that I do outside of, like, one-off spots where, you know, Trout shows up. Like, Trout's price is fine. I don't I don't have a problem having Trout as a one-off, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, I get it if you want to fade this game. It's a big park. Two pitchers that have somewhat respect for, not a huge total. Um, for, like, Red Sox bats, if you want to go back to Mookie bats, I think he had three home runs last night. Um, so kind of chasing points, but it is against the lefty, so still a good matchup. I just don't like the idea of playing guy after he hits three home runs and his ownership will be increased, um, especially because it's a lefty. But J.D. Martinez as well, and then Hanley Ramirez if you want to go against Skaggs. Like if Skaggs is going to be popular, he's a guy you can definitely stack against for leverage. Bets three for three, three solo homers, two walks. That is a very uh, isolated game. Yeah. No one Very else selfish. on for three homers, three, two walks. So like, you know, just him. No, yeah, not moving right. any runners outside of guys that might have been on first. It's fascinating stuff. It's a hell selfish, of a game too. Selfish performance by by Betts there. That wow. exactly the way to describe it. Very selfish home runs. Yeah, that's some A Rod stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, I'm gonna end up being nowhere near this game unless there's some weird news that comes out, and uh, I'm gonna either look. Real smart or real dumb, because there's very little middle ground when you like have a full fade of a game. <laughs> That's yeah. Mariners and Astros, three point four run implied total for the Mariners, four point three for the Astros. Uh, it's a sixty percent chance to win for the Astros. Mike Leak going for Seattle. Garrett Cole going for Houston. We touched on it before. Uh, Garrett Cole is my second favorite pitcher of the day. I'll have him in a bundle. He's more than uh, worthy to be paid up for on FanDuel on a shorter slate. Um, got a huge chance to pick up a win. Obviously, an, you know, an acceptable or an exceptional pitcher. And the Mariners, not exactly a murderer's row um, to be super scared about. I love Cole. I'm in for a bunch of him. How much coal do you think you'll get to coal as your one? I'm, I'm actually playing around with it right now and seeing if I can make a, a coal ray lineup that I like. And I mean, it's not that hard. So, like, there's a pretty good chance I end up with Robbie Ray and Garrett Cole in my, in my lineup. I think that'll be a chalkier build as the day goes on. Yeah. Um, if people try it. But there are, like, I talked about Balbuena and Descalso, Avila, like these guys, Nick Williams, they're all cheap enough that you can jam these two guys in and still get some bats that you like. We'll take a Cole. peek at that when we do the, the DK crunch. We'll filter down to Cole and Ray and see how many yeah. there are. Yeah, good idea. Um, Cole's just been amazing. 11, 11, and 14 strikeouts in his first three games. That's seven so innings. Nasty. Seven innings each time. Mariners, um, it is a tough matchup, I think. Uh, like, there's not a a bunch of big names here for the Mariners. 
Um, you lead off with D. Gordon, Segura, Cano. Those guys don't really strike out much. Um, maybe that doesn't apply to Cole right now because he's just on fire. He's just got he just got it figured out. Um, it's just tough for me to go here when the Mariners have the second least swing strike uh, swinging strike rate, and then the eighth least uh, O swing percentage in the league as well. So they've been pretty patient. Um, and then Ray is just 2K cheaper. So if I if I had to choose one on DraftKings, it would be Ray. But Cole might even be lower owned because of his price on DraftKings. So that makes him appealing as well. And like I said, you can probably fit them fit them both in. Yeah, we're on the same page there. If I had to if forced to choose, I would pick Ray before Cole because of the price. And I think they have sort of similar ceilings. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end up having like I, I mentioned it before. I if it I'd expect at least 80% Cole and Ray, if not more, uh, in some sort of combination. I don't yeah. have any interest in, in grabbing any Mariners bats to run against it, at least not on FanDuel. Um, you can talk me into probably Gordon, Cano, and Seeger on DK, and then you know if I needed a fourth, you know maybe Segura, I don't know. I don't really love it. I'd be I'm I'm going to be looking a little bit more at Astros bats, and even then I don't love the prices. But you know it's Mike Leak, and he's yeah. uh, real bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I just way too much respect for Cole right now for me to target bats against him. But exactly. Like Cano, if you're making 150 lineups, if, if I was making 150 lineups, he would be a guy that I pretty much always leave in against a righty. Um, but that's about it. Astros bats, I'm in for, you know, the standard Springer Bregman, Altuve Correa. Um, Josh Reddick hitting fifth as a lefty would be exceptional, in my opinion. That's a bad word for that. He's not exceptional. Very good play relative to his price. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I'm in for all of that stuff, though. Uh, 4.3 run implied total. It's one of the better ones of the day, so I'm fine going that direction. Mike Leake is just super hittable, and uh, the guys at the top of the Astros order are, like, super good hitters. <laughs> so that's a bad, yeah. bad recipe for Mike Leake getting through this game. Yeah, Leak has a 5.9% swing strike rate. That's not 45, bad. 45% hard contact. Everything's getting squared up, and everything's getting pulled. So I looked at um, on Baseball Savant. It's a really good site. If you guys haven't checked out, you can, you can check out average exit velocities. This is where I'm getting these stats for. Um, but Leak ranks fourth in average exit velocity for all starting pitchers this year that have at least 10 batted balls or more. Um, 94.7 miles per hour is his average exit velocity. And that's for both handedness. And then I sorted for the same um, for just righties, which the Astros start out with six of them or five of them. Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Reddick's batting fifth. So four righties, then Reddick, then Uriel Gaddis. So whatever, six out of seven. So for righties, he's also fourth in the entire MLB. Whew. He is just, everything's getting crushed. And, like, if there's ever a spot for the Astros to wake up, it's right now. This seems like a dream matchup for them. Weather's not perfect, but at 55 degrees, we can deal with for hitting. And I feel like I'd re- recommend the Astros for every single slate they're on, but they just have so much power. And I just like can't not have some Astros in my lineup because of the, the stuff I've seen from Leak. So I get it if, if you just are done with the Astros or you want to wait until they start hitting to start playing them, but there's nothing that I dislike about this matchup. So, And you can even stack the bottom of the lineup too. Like, it's not just the first five guys. You can go Giriel, Gaddis, McCann, Fisher even. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't have a problem having McCann as my catcher if, uh, if I was stacking up the squad. But I'm in for the Astros. They're just – they should mash Mike Leak on a night where there's not, like, a ton of clear-cut stuff to grab. Um, you know, a lot of the implied totals for the top teams are in the same sort of area – Seven mm-hmm. games, so like there's not a ton of stuff out there. Uh, I'll, I'm willing to put my chips on the guys that are just premium bats in general. 
and hope that that just shakes out. Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa are all real high-end players, and Mike Leake is like the opposite of that. <laughs> so I'm just going to bet on, on talent sometimes. It's just sometimes that transcends price. Yeah, that's a perfect way to put it. Mike Leake, he's just yeah. he's not any good. No, so. not at all. Anything else here? I don't I don't really have anything else I need to touch on. No, I, it's all the Astros. Um, Cole, if you can fit him, if you can make him work, yeah, I think is a perfectly fine play. And that's about it. Final game, Padres and Dodgers. Padres 3.3 run implied total. Dodgers 4.2. It's a 60% chance to win for the Dodgers. Uh, I have it as Luis Perdomo going for San Diego, although mm-hmm. it looked like there might have been some weirdness with who at least was starting or now is starting. And then uh, Kenta Maeda going for the Dodgers. Um, Maeda's fine. I just Robbie Ray is just so much better of a value tonight that it makes Maeda look way worse, at least on FanDuel. He's got a really nice chance to pick up a win. I'd be okay if he showed up in some of my lines. Um, there's just... Ray and Cole are such number one and number two with a bullet that like it makes the gap between two to three uh, significantly bigger. And then on DK, again, like I can't imagine not grabbing Ray over Maeda, but he looks good. It's a nice matchup. I'm not worried about the Padres. Maeda misses bats. So it's it's a direction I would go. Uh, I just don't see it working out naturally just from the construction of this particular slate. I think I think people like to just blindly target against San Diego, um, especially when you got a righty like Maeda who can strike guys out, but at that price on DraftKings, 9700 he's too close for Ray for me, and I'd much rather go with the the general upside of Ray in a pretty decent matchup than go with Maeda when I think he's going to be pretty popular, actually. Um, as far as bats against Maeda, uh, Franchi Cordero, um, he has been crushing the ball. He's got a 97.6 average exit velocity so far. Um I mean, Hosmer as well. There are some bats that I'm scared of. And Cordero, like, could definitely strike out four times. He's very (laughs) wild at the plate. But when he does hit the ball, he he hits it hard. So that's a guy that I like. Um, I'm not sure. Do you like – did you say you like Perdomo? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah, he (laughs) he can't really handle lefties. So that's – I love the Dodgers bats. Yeah, I, I like the Dodgers quite a bit too. Um, Corey Seager in particular looking exceptional. Uh, Matt Kemp on FanDuel at 2,900 is a guy that I'm, I'm going to want to focus on. Um, you know, yeah. Again, I don't love Bellinger, generally speaking, but as part of a stack, it's a direction I like going. And then you know, you can, I can fill out a fourth really in any direction. I think Grandal looks really nice on DK. Uh, catch feels like it's like really good today on DraftKings. Yeah, it- yeah, just looking at the top guys, Grandal, Gaddis, McCann. Um, I mean, Posey, uh, like Avila. I don't love, yeah. but. Yeah, there's definitely guys you can play at Avila. Every price range. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, what else we got in this game? Yeah, I'm going to uh, end up with a lot of Dodgers bats. They'll be my, I would yeah. guess the Dodgers end up being my second most popular stack behind the oh, really? backs. Hmm. Um, that's interesting. I like the Astros and the D-backs over the Dodgers, I think. And then I think I even have the Nationals ahead of the Dodgers as well. So that's sort of where I'm at right now. It is a really balanced lineup. So, And I do like targeting lefties against Perdomo. So I would like guys like Seager, Bellinger, and Grandal would be the main guys I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, Seager in particular for me just looks like a really nice shortstop play tonight. You know, Perdomo, nothing to worry about. Mm-hmm. Seager hitting second. Like, I just, I love that. I love, man, I, I just wish I liked Bellinger more. I don't know why I don't, but that's he's the only not, thing keeping he's not me for from everyone. going nuts. He's not for everyone. <laughs> just just for me, I'll, I'll take the Bellinger. I love guys that try to hit home runs every time. Oh, so do I. Like, as, from a personal standpoint, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to end up with a bunch of Dodgers. That's my expectation. 
So I ran 150 lines before we started this. You can see very quickly, whoa, that's a ton of Carlos Carrasco. Did I miss a game? Uh, no, that he's in the Indians Twins. No, uh, I'm just very surprised that it's it, he's where Robbie Ray, it, like I would have expected Robbie Ray to be in that Carrasco 53% spot. So Robbie Ray only popped up in 9%. I got 53% Carrasco, 36% Cole, 9% Ray. I think that's because of the way the stack is set up. It's not grabbing as much Robbie Ray because it's prioritizing getting four Diamondbacks bats. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit because that's not what I want. <laughs> I want more Ray. Um, the coal part makes sense. 36% coal is mm -hmm. you know more than okay with me. But four Diamondbacks right out of the gate. Marte, Discalso, Pollock, and Dyson. Um, just in a ton of lineups. That'll that'll thin itself down as we get lineups out a little bit more. Carlos Santana is seems to be like the highest one-off guy, which makes perfect sense to me. He graded out really nicely when we when we went through it. Um, then we get down to the Dodgers stack. Hernandez, Seager, Taylor, Kemp, they're all popping up a lot. So it definitely looks like Diamondbacks and, and Dodgers are going to be the direction I'm going. Uh, and then I'm just going to have to play around to get Robbie Ray in more lineups because he needs to be in more lineups. Yeah, that's that's what I would have too. More more Robbie Ray. Um, Let's check out DK. Man, 53% Carrasco? I don't understand that. It's because of the settings for the stack, for sure. It's grabbing more Diamondbacks bats and then stopping itself from grabbing ray as a fifth diamond back got it yeah because you can only have four four players total yeah like because i i mean he grades out on the per dollar basis like significantly better than anybody else if i didn't put any stacks or anything in there i know that he would be the number one guy um yeah. it just so happens that the construction and the settings of fantasy cruncher the way that i have them in right now at least would be uh would be the problem okay Let's check out DK. I'm always more interested to check out DraftKings because I'm going to run FanDuel crunches, you know, for the next nine hours. So <laughs> I'll get real used to those. Whereas the DK stuff, I just kind of like seeing how dramatically different a build ends up being. Cruncher, running a little slow this morning. I can't complain too much. It's an outstanding tool. Let's add two stacks. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. That's not in there. Should probably shorten that slate size. We don't need the other seven games to be involved here. <laughs> no, we do not. Alright, there we go. Yeah, lots of Carlos Santana. There's the Diamondbacks for you. Yeah. The a lot cheap, of Garrett Cole. The, yeah, the cheap, well, all the Diamondbacks, but the cheap ones are especially going to be healthily owned on DraftKings, I would think. Yeah. If you want to go with that Cole-Ray combo or Cole-Maeda or Maeda-Ray, some sort of um, double payup for pitcher, they'll be, um, they'll be popular. So just try to get your lineup somewhat differentiated with one-offs or additional mini stacks if you're stacking up uh diamondbacks a lot of ray a lot of cole a lot of vincent velasquez roark maeda it's a it's a really nice spread after you drop down from cole yeah um santana a one-off hitter um looks like a nat stack there's turner and harper Mm -hmm. So I guess we can take a look. I'll, I'll filter down to Robbie Ray and Garrett Cole. There's five, only five lines that popped up for a combination of the two of them. Uh, Astros looking to go a little bit with them. But Diamondbacks are going to be the, the primary stack. Looks like Phillies are going. Diamondbacks and Phillies get you to a decent stack of Ray and Cole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, you can probably even do an Astros stack if – but you're not going to get the the four top guys in. No. Like you're 
you're going to have to go down to uh, Guriel and McCann or Redick, which I like all those guys individually. Like if they were batting two spots higher in the order, everyone would be all over them. Oh, oh yeah, I'm with you. It's going to be a fun night. I'm excited to play. I'm, I'm starting to really like gain my gain some steam with what, playing baseball. Like I'm, I'm finally transitioning mentally out of basketball and getting into this and wanting to play every night. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, um, baseball. Baseball can be fun. Like last night when you nail both pitchers and right. get some okay bats. But yeah, I was happy with last night. Hey, it's, as long as uh, as long as the final tally says plus one penny, um, I'm I'll call it a victory. Yeah, and it did. I mean, it didn't. That's not exactly what it was, but you know. No, it was two pennies. Two yeah, pennies. exactly. Yeah. Um, hockey. What do you got to plug? Same articles as always, and those will be seven days a week as long as we have slates. So I'll be getting those out every day. The uh, spotlight players of the night, which is just um, individual players at different price points, and then the stacks of the night. Um, you check out Osmo's rankings for the stacks to get a more comprehensive look of where he's at on the slate and then yeah spotlight pictures i'll have out again hopefully can repeat last night yeah um i'll have hitters and stacks out in the near future uh nba projections and rankings will be up those are all now behind the paywall sorry everybody but highly recommend um getting the premium content uh we're churning it out at a pretty crazy rate right now uh, one other thing to plug that is outside of the, the baseball sphere, Playline.com. Uh, if you go to Playline and uh, let me pull it up now so I make sure I get the contest name correct. Uh, but there's a, a contest that you can enter that we are a part of for tonight's NBA slate. You'd be picking the points, rebounds, and assists for LeBron uh, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. The name of the contest is awesomeo.com presents the $1 million perfect line bonus. It's a $2,000 guaranteed tournament. It, the name of the tournament is called I Love This Game. Uh, if you enter that, you know, you'll be battling against us. Uh, for anybody that is a premium subscriber, uh, if you have the highest score of any premium subscriber and tweet us our, or tweet us your your screen name on Playline, you will win a autographed Chris Paul jersey. So yeah. if you are a member of our premium or if you're on the fence about doing it, do that. Go to Playline. You can use the promo code AWESEMO, A-W-E-S-E-M-O. You'll actually get a, a free $5 with that code. Um, you can enter this, and if you finish at the top, that's a Chris Paul jersey for you. So come check that out. Uh, you know, Very minimal investment to you. Um, it's a $2 entry fee for the tourney. And if you do use that Osmo code, if you haven't played at Playline before, um, you'll get five bucks back into your account the next day. So really a no-lose situation. And if you were on the fence about thinking, uh, you know, getting our premium subscription, uh, now would be a great time to do it because you can do that and potentially win that signed jersey. I'll put yeah. a link to that in the uh, comment section um, of the video. That way people can find that as well. But that's what we've got going on for today. Lots of stuff, lots of baseball, lots of basketball, lots of hockey. We're covering it all, people. Here we are. If you have any questions for us, um, hit us up on Twitter, uh, at Jake Hari, at Josh Engelman. Easy to be found. Um, we're happy to help in any way that we can. So that's all I've got. You got anything else you need to add? No, good luck on the slate tonight. I like these mid-sized slates, so should be fun. I agree. Go Braves. Good luck, everybody. Good luck.